Hi everybody and welcome to video number 38 on my channel, Crafty Cat Stitcher. My name is Kathy. If you're a returning viewer or a subscriber, thanks for coming back. And if you're new here, if you haven't visited me before, uh, welcome and I hope you find something fun or helpful or interesting and return and consider subscribing. That would be much appreciated. So uh, today is Tuesday, November 26, 2019. Already, can you believe it? We are solidly into the Christmas season. Um, and I don't know about around where you live, but around here, people are already completely decorated for Christmas. And now, you know, like maybe even 10 years ago, you wouldn't see that. I'm going to adjust slightly there. You wouldn't see that. That It was something that happened like the day after Thanksgiving here in Georgia, in the Atlanta area. It was like day after Thanksgiving, all the Christmas stuff would go up. Um, but now, I, I am not kidding you. I think there was actually a house. I know there was a house on a road that I go, that I travel frequently and it was decorated right after Halloween like the first week of November and I looked over there and I thought I said what's that on that house oh it's Christmas decorations so you know kind of mixed feelings about it because I like Christmas and I like the decorations and I like seeing what people do to their houses and and with stitching and everything but I don't know is it is it too early I don't know. What's it like where you are? Is it is it different in your part of the country or part of the world? I mean, when I was a little kid, we didn't put the tree up till about, I want to say, the second or third, maybe the second week of December. It was like, it was, you know, maybe like the 10th, 12th, 15th, something like that. So, you know, it wasn't super early. So... But like I said, I've got mixed feelings. I love Christmas, love the decorations and getting ready for it. But hey, it's Thanksgiving this week. So um, if you celebrate Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy it. I wanted to get a quick video in, I don't know, pretty quick, um, so I could show you what I have finished because it's going to be leaving my house. And I think if you've been here before, you know what it is, but if not, show it to you in a minute. But I want to start with whips because I have really pretty much um, um, been stitching quite a bit and I'm, I started off with something I haven't picked up in a while and it's Rainbow Row. Major long-term project. It's by CW Designs. This is the one that was given to me my, by my son and daughter-in-law I went on her trip to Charleston. And um, this is what I have so far. Look at that. Now this represents the first page. It's from here to here. And there's still a little bit down here to do and some chimneys and of course whatever's in here. So um, I'm sticking with my plan to um, do all the back stitching on it before I move to the next page. So, so that's pretty cool. Let me go ahead and get that again. So you can see where I've stitched right in here. So, I can't wait to st stitch on that pink house. Isn't it pretty? So anyway, that's Rainbow Row. Oh, and I also want to show you, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that down. I want to show you, because this just is fascinating to me how many sorry, colors are in this project and I know it's a big project but <laughs> so many that I have to keep it in a special box so anyway go ahead and I'll put that there okay um, I also worked on life tree or tree of life and this is by Robaris which I just think is beautiful this is one that I already know exactly how I'm going to frame it and where it's going to go after I'm done with it. There it is. So, not quite half. 
I really like this. I like this project so much. It's, I'm stitching it on 25 count Lugana and the color was, is, is potato and I um, tea dyed it very lightly, very lightly, just sort of like a quick antique look. And the thread color I chose is 815 DMC. It's just, it's just like the most relaxing project. I think maybe because there aren't any color changes, I can just kind of sit, but you still have to be focused in on it. And the, but you can see the project progress and it's just, it's so nice. I love it. Um, I also worked on, you know, this is, this does not represent all my works in progress. This is just what I worked on since I've seen you last. Um, so just to let new viewers know, this is, um, I also worked on Salute to Abigail. And it's from the book, Sweet Land of Liberty, Word Designs. This is, and this is another one. It's like, I love this project. So, um, I'm doing it on the call for a fabric, which I believe is 35 count ale, um, linen in the color ale. And, uh, but the losses, um, it calls for silks and I didn't want to do silks. So I did a conversion and I think this is like really, if I may say so myself without sounding like a braggy person, I think it's a really good conversion. So, and if you want to know, I'll put my email address below and I will tell you what the conversion is. I'm going to put this over here. Let's see. And last but not least, I, uh, no bees, no honey. And it, oh, it looks like this. It's by, um, Words of a Feather. I'm getting a little glare. I'm in a different spot today because um I, I it's I, you know it's like lighting issues and I'm still having a little bit but if I turn look oh that's good so you can see no bees no honey and my progress I'm doing this one over one on 20 count I think it's Jobelin and it's kind of like a antique white the only thing is I think there's a Z here. See the Z? Maybe a little too light. What do you think? Yeah, I think I could do better with that. I think I'm going to go into my DMC and choose something that is more, a little bit more contrasting with the fabric. But um, it's coming along really well. Um, the bees, I did a little bit of a change and I'm doing... They, the color that I was supposed to do the bees in was this green, and I, I don't kind of don't understand that. So I did a little bit of a change, color change of my own. So, right? Okay. So um, I had a finish. I have an actual finish. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> Blackbird Designs, The Light Upon the Lawn. There we go. Actual finish. Can you believe it? There we go. And there it is. I like this. I think I'm going to just frame this very simply. No mat, just a little frame. So I could put it anywhere. Oh. It is small. It is very small. So it's just going to be a little tiny place and framed in just to put in a little, on a little wall space anywhere, you know, anywhere that I have some room. So, and I use the call for colors and the fabric is a tea, tea and coffee dyed, um, fabric that I've told you about before, about when it, when I coffee dyed it, it kind of expanded, I guess, so that when I was doing um, two over two, 
the stitches were huge and it just looked weird. So I started, I did a one over one. And I, you know, it really, it really stitched up nice one over one. So there it is, a finish. Yay. Okay, now I know I've told you about this. I've been talking about this for quite a while. And um, I, mean, I got it done. It's the ornament. And let's put the little bow behind it so you can see. There it is. What do you think? I don't know. I think this is probably the best I can get. Um, so the design is from Black Fairy Lane Designs and the chart is called Frosty Weather. And I just took a little piece of that out. There's a lot more to it. There's bird houses and birds, but I thought I'll just do this. I'll put the snowman in the Christmas tree. And the fabric is um, a 32 count, and I am not sure what the color is called or the fabric is. Again, if you need to know or if you want to know, I can let you know, um, or I can put it in the notes below. But I did it one over one, and I, I know I told you in the last video, it was hard. <laughs> It was hard cramming in a small needle and to do that. And so um, if you'll notice, I put some little, and, and the problem is, is because this is so thick it, and there is a space between the stitching and the glass, but not really where the tree is. So, but I've got some micro beads in there and they kind of move around a little bit. <laughs> You can see a couple of them up here, but micro beads are just small beads with no holes in them. And when I got them, my husband goes, what do you do with those? <laughs> like, I'm going to use them for something. Mm -mm, mm -mm. They're like barely bigger than grains of sand. So anyway, I am totally happy with this finish. This is a Tim Holtz watch. You can get these at Joanne and on Amazon. I think I got mine on Amazon. Um, the idea, I got this idea from Vanna, the Twisted Stitcher. She had done one of these uh, several years back. And as soon as I saw it, I said, I've got to do that. I've got to do something like this. So um, thanks to Vanna. I'm sure a lot of us say that a lot, but she does have some of the best ideas around. So there it is. And I got this, I have this special little box for it. Look at it's like a star. Oh, I wanted to show you the back. So I did my little stitched 2019 on the back. What do you think? Okay. So the box I got. And in fact, I had this box for a long time and I never used it for anything. So I thought this is perfect. Sometimes you know you just have those things that you buy after Christmas. You go to Target or wherever and you see something and it's like, oh, wow, so you might percent off. <laughs> but look at, oh, it's sticking out. That's okay for now. But there it is. It's that, and I wanted to show that to you because it's going to be given in the next couple days. So the recipients who I hope don't watch this video before they get here, They are coming in um, tomorrow and will be staying with us for Thanksgiving through Sunday. So um, they're going to get that then. So I'm so excited. I like to make them, it's my son and daughter-in-law, and I like to make them a little ornament every year. And um, that's, that's my plan. It's just to make them something cute every year that they can keep. It's like a little keepsake. So, all right. I watched some new floss tubers, and there are quite a few new floss tubers on, so go in there and look, but I watched Hollis Hands Create. Her name is Christine. I watched Fresh Coast Cross Stitch Tracy, 
and also 805 Stitcher. I think that's what she's calling her name is Tara. And all three are delightful and have things that you want to stitch. And they have all kinds of things that will interest most stitchers. So go and, and look at them. I'll put their links below, like I always do. I like to encourage new floss tubers. And, um, and there are, like I said, there are a lot of them and a lot more. And I'm sorry if I didn't say yours, if you're a new floss tuber. And if you want, in the notes, or in your comment, I should say, you, should, you could go ahead and say, hey, I'm a new floss tuber. Would you watch my video? And I, of course I will. Of course, of course. So, yeah. So anyway, uh, Hollis Hands Create Fresh Coast Cross Stitch in 805 Stitcher. Go take a look. It'll be worth it. It's like, it's great. Okay, now, um, let's do a little cross stitch rewind. And this is another one that I wanted to do before my guests get here because I think, I don't know if they're going to want to take this yet. Maybe this is something I'll give to them, give that to them later. But this is something that my mom stitched. And the good thing about it, let's see, did she put her initials anywhere? Hmm. No, she did not. I'm wondering if that's an initial. Nah. Um, but I know she stitched it in 1989. Now it's two. My son was two. But she put his initials on there. And this has been hanging in my craft room. And I thought, you know, this is probably something that they should have in their house. Now, they're going to be moving in the next six months, so they might not want to take it actually with them at this time, but they will eventually get this. I have no idea where the chart came from, um, but she stitched it. I know, she always stitched in DMC. And um, it's on like an Oatmeal Ada or a Fiddler's Cloth or something like that. She probably got the chart out of a magazine. She liked magazine charts. And that is very cool. So that's by my mom, Lillian, who's no longer with us, but we will be remembering her this week at Thanksgiving, along with my dad. So anyway, um, this is going to, yeah, this is going to go to Matt, MJP, so that he can have this in his house. So that's my crusted rewind for this week. Um, I got a little bit creative with the sewing machine this week and uh, made a project bag. <laughs> it's a Christmas one. And again, let's go ahead and we'll give Vanna another shout out because this is her, uh, her pattern for her project bag. And that's online. I will put the link to that below. This is, to me, this is the easiest project bag to make. It is fast. It's not fussy. It's you have, it's three pieces of fabric and a closure. Now, um, Vanna shows a um, Velcro closure in the actual video, and I've done that, and I've also used magnetic snaps. But I got a little different idea for this one. I have a, a little coupon envelope that I, that has a closure like this with the, it has like two buttons and I took a piece of twine and you go like this. And I like that. I think that's kind of cool. So, and it's fun. The fabric's fun. I got this. This is some of the fabric that I bought from the lady that came, sold me a whole bunch of fabric for like $15 last year. So, um, I just thought that was really cute. Little Christmassy, wintry project bag just for fun. So, I'll put the link below. And again, thank you, Vanna, for that. Um, what else is going on? Uh, I got a few new things. Remember when I said I wasn't going to... <laughs> I was not going to be buying too many new things. So I kind of... I kind of... Kind of took it back a little bit this month. But of course, I got my Victorian motto. Colors, primitive colors. Which... I ooh and ah over these every single month. They are beautiful. I need ideas on how to store them. Right now I have them in a tin 
and I just kind of stuffed them in there. But um, and it's fine. They're clean. They stay clean and neat. And but I don't know. I think I need a better way to store these. Any ideas? But they're pretty, and I really like getting those in the mail. Um, and just two charts I got. Just two charts. <laughs> I ordered these from Jen McCray at the Whole Stitch and Caboodle on Facebook. It is a Facebook group. And um, let me go ahead and put the link to that also because I like the way that she does her business. I it's easy. She she posts new things or even you know things that have been out for a while. And you just say me please. And it's not like you're 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 vying with somebody else to win it. You're just telling her you would like one. And the person after you says, I like one. So she adds them up and gets the appropriate amount and she ships once in a while. And so I got two Plum Street samplers. I got Bless Our Land, which I think is beautiful. Oh, I like that so much. And I I got Clementine because as soon as I saw Clementine, I said, I've got to have that. That reminds me of my cat, Ozzy. I mean, look on, see, and he was a boy, of course, Ozzy. And, um, but the look on, on that cat's face, that's Ozzy. Anybody who knew Ozzy? I mean, that's Ozzy. So anyway, it can be Clementine, but it'll always be Ozzy to me. <laughs> Um, so that was just, those are just my new things and that, that's all I got. That's all I got for you guys. Really. I feel like I've been so busy doing things and, um, but I have, you know, I've done some pretty good stitching. So, um, I'm thinking anything else plans. I'm just going to keep up with some kind of a rotation. I'm, I really like it. I think it, you know, it's kind of. It's kind of getting things a little bit done, and I'm kind of I'm very happy that I got two finishes this month. So that that made me very glad. Um, but I'm just gonna go through go with my rotation. Uh, there are several projects that got kind of fell out of the rotation that I need to pick up and do. So um, it's time for a giveaway. Yeah, last video I told you how I bought two charts two of the same chart by accident that never happens to you does it you never do that so I don't think I'm the only one I bought two of these lovely collection tra la la and you can go ahead and you can tell me how you pronounce that but it's a very cute little chart isn't that pretty so because I bought two that means we're going to give one away so um all you have to do is comment and just tell me how many whips you have and it doesn't matter this is not a contest to see who has the most that's not how I'm doing this. I'll just do it random number generator because some of us don't have a lot of whips by choice. And I was a single project stitcher until a few years ago. So, you know, you might say, well, I only have one. And that's fine because that's how I used to do. And I know a lot of people who still do that. And that's, that's what cross stitch is about. You just choose how you want to do it. There's no right or wrong way. Or if you have a hundred whips, I'm not going to make fun of you either way. But you you will get a chance to win this lovely chart. And you have to be 18 at least. You have to be a subscriber. Please be a subscriber. Don't mention giveaway in your comments. Please don't. Hmm. My coffee is getting cold. Um, don't mention, don't mention a giveaway. Um, I will definitely be back before Christmas 
and this will definitely be in the mail to you before Christmas, whoever wins it. So, and like I said, I think it's going to be random number generators, how I'll um, choose. So, um, yeah, giveaway. Be a subscriber, at least 18, don't mention giveaway. And I'll also have a way, make sure there's a way I can get a hold of you because sometimes people will win and I cannot get a hold of them or other, I know floss tubers have said that in the past, <clears throat> that it was difficult to get a hold of somebody. So just have a way I can get a hold of you to, to tell you that you won. All right, um, that is all I've got today. I just want to, if you celebrate Thanksgiving, I just want to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy it, whatever you're doing. We're going to my niece's house, um, and I'm looking forward to that. I've got my food assignments, <laughs> and I'm going to, right after this, I'm going to go and I'm going to bake some cookies. Hopefully, they'll turn out good, and I can take those with us, too. Um, and like I said, my son and daughter-in-law are coming. They haven't been here since last Christmas. We saw them in the summer, but, um, we don't get to see them very often. They're very, very busy. Um, there's going to be a lot of big things going on for them in the next six months. So, uh, yeah, I'll just tell you, my daughter-in-law is in med school and she's, in the process of interviewing to be matched at her residencies right now. So we're very proud of her and happy for them. And um, there's going to be a move in their future. And so uh, I'm looking forward to celebrating all this with them. Oh, and she'll be graduating from med school in May. So that's another big thing. So um, yeah, so we're just thrilled and happy for them. And we're so excited that we get to actually see them. So, um, yeah, so have a very happy Thanksgiving and remember to be ye thankful. Think about what you're thankful for and don't be afraid to do a, a little bit of gobbling. It's okay to gobble. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving.